diseases. So I'm travelling northeast, deep into India's hinterland, to Varanasi, its spiritual and cultural heart. Built on the banks of the holy river Ganges, Varanasi has been one of the most revered places in the Hindu religion for over 2,000 years. But to a foreigner like me, it does have some strangely surreal sights. <laughs> I know who has right of way here, and it's not me. In the Hindu religion, cows are sacred, so wander freely. But these bovines can carry a disease that's killing millions of people. Tuberculosis is caused by a deadly bacterium that eats away the lungs and respiratory system. A single sneeze can release up to 40,000 bacteria-laden droplets into the air, and you can catch a new infection simply by inhaling the airborne bacteria. It kills about two million people every year, half a million of those right here in India. Roughly speaking, that's one person every minute. Cows can also carry the bacteria, and humans can catch tuberculosis directly from them by ingesting their infected milk and meat. Tuberculosis is one of the biggest killers in the world. Among adults, it's the single most deadly infectious disease. Once you've contracted the bacterium that causes tuberculosis, they generally infect the lungs. That's mainly because it's the bacteria's first point of call after inhalation but the bacteria can spread via your bloodstream to other organs as well, destroying the body tissue as it goes. Now, girls, this has been fun, but I need to go. Can you make way for me? Varanasi may be the holy grail for Hindu pilgrims, but as a virologist, I'm on a pilgrimage of my own to find out about the deadly virus which we can get from macaque monkeys. This is Sankat Mochan Temple and it's dedicated to the monkey god, Hanuman. Hey, don't you do that. Did you see? This one doesn't like me. It's threatening me with its fangs. Nonetheless, I've got to show him who's boss. I need a seat. That's a good boy. Monkeys might be revered here in the temple, but in other parts of India, they can be a thorough pain. They can bite, with children being three times more likely than adults to be bitten and it's not unheard of for people to lose their noses in a process. Also, these animals spread diseases. They carry illnesses like rabies that you've probably heard of, and also a disease that I'm fairly certain you wouldn't have heard of, Cercopithecine herpes virus 1, or more simply, herpes B virus, or just B virus. It's similar to the herpes viruses that give us cold sores. An infection is marked by watery blisters around the mouth, eyes or genitals. The main difference between the herpes virus that causes cold sores and B viruses, at least when human beings get it, is that B virus is deadly. First of all, you might notice a lesion around the bite or scratch site, and then you'll get neurological symptoms, again, locally, so you'll have nervous problems around where you were bitten but ultimately, you're likely to develop encephalitis, or a swelling of the brain. In fact, in a study of 22 people who contracted B virus from monkeys, 15 died. Now, that doesn't make your odds very good. And with so many monkeys around, what can you do to protect yourself? Hide your food, certainly don't feed them, and bear in mind that however cute these guys are, they can kill you. As we're leaving, something unexpected happens. As we're packing up our camera gear, one of the temple macaques attacks me. I can't be sure, but it definitely feels like I've been bitten. Right, we've got to go to the gents to check to see if the monkey that bit my leg broke the skin. Maybe we'll find the scars. Oh, where? If the bite's broken the skin, there's every possibility I could contract B virus with an 80% chance of dying. There's definitely a lump on my leg, but luckily my skin is intact. Thankfully, that monkey had bit my pocket, and inside it was a paper pad. Oh dear, monkeys who'd have them. 
saved by my notepad, but still too close a call for my liking. After that experience, I'm feeling more than a little monkey shy, but I'm still keen to head off the beaten track to find a really cool bug with a really unusual defence mechanism. Look in there. Can you see? It looks a bit like a scorpion. And it is a bit like a scorpion. But this is a whip scorpion. Now, it's hard to know which is the business end of this creature, but let's see if I can grab him, because he's relatively harmless in as much as he's not going to kill me. What makes this a very special little creature is the way it defends itself, because unlike other scorpions, it doesn't have a sting in its tail. What they do have are special glands at the base of their tail that produce acid. There, he's just squirted. I think I've done something to annoy this little creature because it's just done something it's famous for, which is squirting acid at people or things or me or creatures that are going to bite it that it sees as a threat. Now, I can assure you that smells just like vinegar. It's a lot more powerful than vinegar, which is a mild acid, but it smells very similar. You may or may not remember from school that this is indicator paper. It should show whether this is alkaline or acid. If it's acid, this paper should go pink. Now, it doesn't help me very much that I'm almost colourblind, but I think you'll see from that unequivocal evidence that it was spraying acid. Can you see it's just going pink there by the end of my fingers? It's in fact acetic acid, which is the same acid as you find in vinegar, but much, much stronger. The acid spray is so powerful that it dissolves the hard exoskeleton of insects, which is what this creature eats. All I really felt from that was a funny smell and a taste in my mouth. If it was in your eye, that would definitely hurt. And if this little creature used those potent weapons on a small insect, it would mean death. Death by butt acid. But there's another undercover assassin that lives in this forest, and I need to go much deeper into the undergrowth to find it. I thought those thorns had me then. And it's not long before I find what I'm looking for. Oh, yes. Oh, wonderful. I found something really cool here. Right, let's see how I can get hold of it. A wonderful little creature I'd love to show you. Now, it can be a bit of a handful. So, right, there we go. Can you see? This is a bombardier beetle. Now, if I grab hold of it, which is tricky. Oh, did you see that? Did you see that? Now, that is why this little creature is called a bombardier beetle. Now, if you were to lean on this, or pick it up thinking it was harmless, it can defend itself well. By mixing two chemicals that are secreted from glands in the abdomen, it causes what's effectively a small explosion. The explosions are very short, only a fraction of a second long, and fire in pulses like a machine gun. And the heat created by the chemical explosion is incredibly hot, around 95 degrees Celsius. Wow, did you hear that popping noise? That was cool, and also, you can't really see anything there because my hand was a little bit too far away, but it actually burnt my finger. That felt very hot. You can imagine, if something comes to prey on this little beetle and it lets off with a salvo of shots like that, well, nothing's gonna eat it. This is a little gem, there. Now, the palm of your hands, it won't matter too much, but if it's somewhere more sensitive, it's going to hurt, and it's going to give a lasting, nasty red patch. <sighs> right, I think it's time that this little guy blazed a trail on someone else's fingers. There, look at 